I met Colin at the age of 11. He was acting the fool and dancing on a table and he was just making us all laugh. Just because he was such a bubbly person and you could see he loved life, music. We used to like playing table tennis, snooker. Every week there was a, a disco at the youth club. It just went on from there. We're, he'd actually been going to Wigan Hospital because he'd had lots of ulcers in his mouth and they were treating him for candida. It just went on and on and on and it, it was just getting worse with lumps of flesh coming off inside of his mouth. He went to Manchester Royal to have a skin tag taken off his underneath his eye and it was a doctor that who asked him, have you got any health issues? And he said, I'm a bit concerned about this in my mouth. And immediately when he saw it, he said it was cancer. That's when they sent him for bloods, scans, biopsies, all kinds of tests. I can always remember I stood there ironing away in the house because he'd only gone for this skin tag. And he said, uh, I've got cancer. And I just like dropped the iron and went hysterical. And he had to have more tests for radiotherapy because other health issues he's got they didn't think the operation he'd be able to stand it because it was 11 hours long they said the cancer had gone and they did more biopsies and then when we went back for the results they said well we're sorry to tell you whether it's cancer i couldn't take it in but colin we really can he just thought he'd been dealt this really bad deal of life kind of thing even though he appreciates everything in life and then this had to happen it's awful it's awful and he had to go every week to be strapped down on the table with a mask so he could have radiotherapy scary you can see how burnt he was he knew how much pain he'd have to go through. All he was thinking about was motorbike racing. That'll be his goal to get back to fitness and then he can go racing bikes again. And then this thing started growing again in his mouth. October time, we was taken into a room and there were nurses and several doctors and they said, if you don't have the operation, He'll be dead before Christmas in December. It was spreading so quick. So he only had a few weeks to think about it. The morning that they said they was doing the operation, they explained to it best they could what they was going to move, remove the jaw and this and that. We had lots of issues of him having this done because you had to be peg fed and you had to have a trachea. Uh, even that freaked him out. You can take it in, but you can't picture what it's going to be like. So I walked down to theatre with him. I was a bag of nerves, but I didn't feel emotional or anything like that. I was just pleased with having it done, really. Then he could live. 18 hours later, I went back to the hospital. He just didn't look the same person. I didn't think it was Colin. It was awful to see him. There were tubes everywhere. And big staples everywhere and this enormous bulbous flap on the side of his face which I thought was a bandage and it weren't it was his it was his new skin my mum uh, came and stayed with me at our house because she had to support me because I was, I was just too weak and honestly didn't want to go back to the hospital because it just wasn't him he didn't just have his face cut open and taken off. He had all his back cut open to take the shoulder blade for a jaw and the muscle and skin to build the inside of the mouth as well as the outside. And he was just in agony all the time. I had uh, the major surgery, as you can see, back in October of '07. I've got to say it was very difficult in the in the early stages, but the main the main thing to do is really get get your head round the round the problem.
people make fun of Colin. If there's a group of people and they're, they're pointing and, and laughing and you can see they're taking pictures with the phones, they just start laughing and saying, can't really say the words, it's too, they're too disgusting what they come out with. It'd be nicer if they'd ask him, you know, what what's happened. They think it's all right to make fun of him. How would they like to be told they've got three months to live because they've got ulcer in the mouth, which turns out to be cancer? Would they have the same operation done to stay alive? If it was their family and they was getting the same grief, what would they do? Would they walk round with this swelling on the face? Would they do the same to carry on enjoying life? If he comes in and he's had a really bad night, um, he don't want to be here anymore. He refuses to go out again. He doesn't want to do anything. He won't go anywhere. Teaching young children as they're growing up, they need to know not to laugh at people. Their nieces and nephews have learned by seeing Colin and they understand to a certain extent what it is. He's living with it every day and it's only the last six months we've been able to have a mirror in the bathroom. And that was due to the dentist who he was seen at the dental hospital said, you need the mirror because you have to watch what's happening in your mouth. He said he actually feels ugly. It just makes him feel depressed every time he sees himself. But it's nothing to do with how you look, is it? It's the person you are in. He's inspired so many people now to have certain things done when, you know, when they have to go to the hospital. What he's had to have done to what I have to have done, I'm going to do it because of Colin. I don't have anything done. Because I do, I just think of him, what he's been through. He's just unbelievable. Yeah, I do love him more than ever. He's still jolly, fun to be with, very loving, as long as he's in the house. When we're at home, we're just normal. When we go out, the bubbliness is gone. He looks forward to going out. He likes to watch bands. But as soon as he steps out the door, there'll be people mimicking the lump on his face and how he talks, how he looks. It stops him socialising now. If he walks the dog, he goes where well, there won't be anybody else because he don't want to be seen. Can't just go to a restaurant. We have to go in a corner. He's got to make sure he's sat so nobody sees his cheek. He's got to sit with that against the wall and he's constantly looking around for people just laughing at him. When Colin had uh, the operation done and he first saw what they'd done to his face and it was only through the screen of a television that he happened to see his face, it really upset him and he said if anybody was going to have this done, he'd put them off. But now because he's had a couple of reductions on the face and they're still helping him. He'd love to go to hospital to help somebody through what he went through. Even though he's had a lot of nasty remarks when he's been out, horrible people, there's also been a lot of good people. When he goes, Christy, when he comes back and he sports with the people who's gone through whatever, be it stomach cancer, wherever the cancer is, when he's been talking to other people, he comes out and he'll say to me, do you know what, I'm, I'm lucky really. And then he could, go, he could go out that night and somebody will knock stuffing out of him. And I need, I need this to be seen so people can understand it's not just a lump on his face. They've got rid of this nasty cancer and rebuilt him again so he can enjoy life. And it's amazing what they've done. But there's people out there, mean people, who are stopping him doing it.